welcome to season three, episode one of Kitty Cat Go Live, where we discuss various topics related to traveling and adventuring with your cat. I'm your host, Emily Hall, and tonight we'll be chatting about the benefits of adventuring with cats, the importance of mental and physical simulation, and other indoor enrichment activities. If you're watching with us tonight or on the replay, be sure to say hello in the comments and tell us where you're watching from. Questions are encouraged along the way as well. Our special guest for the evening is Dr. Lynn Barr. Dr. Barr is a 1991 graduate from the University of Georgia College of Veterinary Medicine. She credits a special gray and white ball of kitten fluff to lead her down the path of a career in feline medicine and behavior. Helping to strengthen the human-animal bond is her life's mission and guiding force, and her areas of interest and special care for felines include health and wellness, environmental enrichment, hospice, and ending the practice of declawing. Dr. Barr is currently the CEO of Desi and Roo, a company that designs, manufactures, and sells enrichment products that enhance the lives of cats and their owners. Dr. Barr was the recipient of the 2018 Pet Age Woman of Influence Award and serves on the board of directors of Pandemonium Aviaries, Society of Veterinary Medical Ethics, Fear Free Advisory Board, Alley Cat Allies Task Force, and is on the cat committee of the professional Pet Professional Guild. Dr. Barr is the co-author of Indoor Cats, How to Enrich Their Lives and Expand Their World, which we'll be talking about later, a book dedicated to helping pet parents keep their cats happy and healthy while indoors. I'm going to go ahead and bring Lynn on. Hi, Lynn. Hi. Thank you for thank having you. me. Yeah, thank you so much for being here. I am excited to dig into this tonight and hear your thoughts and opinions on adventuring with cats and in enrichment ideas, because I know you are full of them. <laughs> All right. Um, well, Lynn, I know I just read your bio, so people know a bit about you already, but what else can you tell us about yourself and and what you do and and your, you know, your passions? Well, I um, live in Marietta, Georgia. I'm married with one grown son. I have uh, two cats at the moment, Desi and Rue. <laughs> um, I worked as a veterinarian for 30 years. I've been retired for the past five and started Desi and Rue, a company that um, was born out of need, um, seeing indoor cats and closed in four walls and you know, um, not a lot of pet products. The pet product industry really hasn't focused on cats until very recently. Um, there's been a lack of enrichment products. And I had, you know, saw the need um, through working with my patients. Um, environmental enrichment contributes to good health. And so many of the medical issues that cats have, um, what is the, the cure for it or, or how do you treat it? And that's an environmental enrichment. You know, the big one that we all know about is cystitis. Uh, cats that, that have a problem um, with stress and environmental enrichment has been shown to really improve their life. So um, I just changed my focus from medical to more environmental now. Um, and through my company, I feel like I can reach a, a larger audience and I can help more cats. I, I never knew in the exam room that there was this huge world of cat people out there that were hungry for information and, and ideas and things like that. And, and once I found out that there was, you know, now I feel like I'm really doing a lot more for the feline community on a much bigger scale. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love that. And I mean, it's so clear that your heart is in what you do and um, yeah, I'm excited to hear more about that as we go through. So you, you touched a little bit about on how environmental enrichment can affect your cat's health and, and mm -hmm. well-being. Can you expand on that a little bit? Like what is the importance of mental and physical stimulation for cats? Well, I'll, I'll back up a second. You know, when I first started in my career, actually, it was my cat, Rudolph, a little ball of fluff of 
that I, I, I actually grew up a dog person. I've, and I still love my dogs. I, I've always had dogs until recently. But um, Rudolph spoke to me and changed my life. Um, since then, whenever I talk to people, I found out that, that animals change people's lives. I, you know, I'll give lectures and ask how many people's lives have been changed by an animal and, you know, 90 to 95 percent raise their hands. Um, they're incredible creatures. And so I listened to cats and I just kind of instinctually gravitated towards them. I feel like I really know cats. I'm really in tune with them. When I started my career, most of my patients were outside. I mean, back in the day, you know, I'm not going to give my age away, but I'm um, 60 plus, um, people put their cats out at night. Yeah. You know, something we would never do now. We know that that's not right, but that's, that was the life of a cat. And then they transitioned to indoor outdoor. And, and recently in the past 15 years or so, we've moved towards exclusively indoor cats. And I saw in the exam room a big difference in the di types of um, diseases and ailments that I was treating. When cats were going outside, we were doing a lot of cat abscesses, a lot of feline leukemia, parasites, things like that. Um, everybody thought that putting cats indoors and keeping them exclusively indoors would, you know, eliminate all of that. They'd live longer lives, be healthier and so on. And that it's not the truth. Um, indoors, there's just so many stresses of confinement that we have a whole set of other problems. We have all the itises. We have cystitis and pancreatitis and stomatitis and you know, IBD, which is an itis, inflammatory bowel disease, um, that we just went from one set of problems to a whole different set of problems. And the problems have not disappeared. So um, that 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 has sort of guided where I've gone in treating animals and treating them on a whole. Um, we've we've gone from one extreme to another with the cats being totally outdoors to now being totally indoors, and I feel like it's my current mission to come to a middle point and to have it be more gray than black and white, and to use my voice to get out there to really start letting people in on this thing that, that it's not one or the other, mm -hmm. that while indoors is great in some ways, it's not the end all of the end all. It's not the greatest, best thing for cats ever. Um, it's as simple as, you know, I start out with cats need fresh air, direct sunlight and grass. It is as simple as that. If you have an indoor only cat, but you're providing them with fresh air, direct sunlight and grass, that cat is probably gonna be a lot happier and healthier. Um, I just don't, um, I don't subscribe 100% all of the time for every cat to be an indoor only kitty, never to step foot outside. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, you know, one of the ways that those of us who have indoor cats can provide our cats with the sun and the fresh air and the grass is by harness and leash adventures. Do you do you think that that's a good and safe way for cats to experience at the outdoors? I think it's certainly one of the good ways. I think there's a you know large variety of ways. It's it's as simple as just opening up windows if yeah. that's all somebody can do. Um, at least that fresh air. Nobody has really looked at or delved into the impact of an indoor only environment. Um, I'll take something as simple as this fresh air. You know, cats that live indoors smell just what we're cooking, what we're cleaning with, um, what's inside the house, what candles you're burning, what things you're putting on your body. They never experience fresh air, the smells from outside, um, the cleansing of fresh air, not the stale dry air constantly inside. And um, it's little things like that that um, have not been talked about, haven't been looked at. And 
there's a lot of myths out there. Um, I know you'll get to it later. I wrote a book, Indoor Cat. Um, and in the book, we dispel lots of myths that are being perpetuated over and over again that is actually to the detriment of cats. Um, the biggest one being that indoor cats live longer. Ask any group of cat owners and say, you know, how many believe that indoor cats live longer and, you know, the majority will raise their hand? Of course. Well, the truth of the matter is that's not true. It's a myth. The studies were done on feral cats and a feral mm -hmm. cat outdoors is only going to live about two years. A male cat, unneutered, um, Lifespan is approximately two years. They're born with parasites. They've never been treated for internal parasites. They get feline leukemia, um, viruses, unneutered males fight. They get abscesses. They, they live a short life. Yeah. Compared to indoor cats, yes, that is true. But there, until recently this year, there was never a study that looked at owned indoor-outdoor cats, lifespan versus indoor only. And owned cats that go in and out, that go to the vet, that have owners that feed them, that have owners that love them and take them and get medical care and they come in at night, live just as long, if not longer, than indoor-only kitties. So I don't know, I cannot find the source of where we really started the indoor cat push, other than to look at companies like the litter companies and the pet food companies mm -hmm. that is most definitely to their benefit to promote an indoor only lifestyle. Um, I just think that it's time to start opening that door up again. And like you said, with leash walking and harness training, that's one wonderful way, but there's lots of others. You know, um, in my book, I have a window unit that you can build for under $30 in less than an hour, just to let your cat, you know, open the window and, and be outside and get direct sunlight. Um, yeah. I have a, a really nice deck outside of my house and we have netting around the deck. So the cats can go out on the deck. Um, there's catias. There's l many people who live in safe environments where their cat can actually go out somewhat free roaming. Um, I don't ever propose that that cats should you should just open the door and let your cat out. That would be ridiculous. I think of them as as two year old kids, and and you would not let your two year old go play in the front yard while you cook dinner. Yeah. Um, but you can safely go out with your cat and you, you know, I was thinking about it the other day when we moved into this house here, the first thing we did was fence in our yard for the dogs. Most people do that when they have dogs, they put up dog fence. Mm -hmm. There's cat proof fencing. And yet I don't know of anybody who's put in that cat proof fencing. Yeah. Um, so the, we, we need to start talking about how to get cats outside. Um, I believe that, that the majority of cats should not be living exclusively within four walls unless you live in a high rise or unless you live in an area that's, you know, right there on a highway or it's really unsafe in your neighborhood, then certainly they should not be outside. Um, but most of us got our cats from the outside <laughs> and, we don't give cats enough credit that they're quite smart and they know how to survive. Um, I was thinking back about my days in vet school and back in the day when I got Rudolph and Rudolph moved around with me at 10 different apartments in 10 years. Wow. I was in my 20s. I didn't know any better. We would move. I'd open the door. I'd let Rudolph out. He'd roam, you know, he lived to be 16 years old. Like we didn't think about it back then. Yeah. Um, I have two indoor only kitties now. Mine are exclusively indoors besides, you know, the deck and the catio and, and so on. I've slowly bought into this fear of, oh my gosh, what's going to happen if they go outside? Um, you know, but but in thinking back, um, 
cats used to be able to go outside. <laughs> yeah, I think you, you made an interesting point about how it's so normal for people to fence in the yards for their dogs. Just like it's mm -hmm. so normal people take their dogs for walks and right. take their dogs out to the park and do all these activities with their dogs and cats somehow always get the short end of the stick in that in that area and i i just think um you know like you my my mm -hmm. passion and mission is to try to change that in mm -hmm. some way and make people help people realize you know cats need that in environmental enrichment too like you said the right. fresh air the sunlight you know we have a catio because not all my cats like to go out on harness and leash mm -hmm. and so they have the catio and we have screens on our windows so we can open the windows when the weather is nice and um you know yeah i just um I look forward to the day when cats get the same considerations mm -hmm. that dogs do. I think, you know, when you, when you mentioned like, why don't they, you know, um, dogs are not allowed to roam loose and yeah. it is not beneficial for dogs to roam loose. Um, they're not quite as savvy with cars and, you know, um, their territory and, and so on. And they do go in packs. And um, so dogs can't. And I think that cats had always been outside and always in and out that when people have dogs, they, they do put that fence in for the dog, but don't think about the cat because normally the cats always were outside anyways, and they were able to roam free and um, go about. Um, now there are, you know, stronger laws about cats not free roaming. We have neighbors that may not like cats in their yard or, you know, taunting their indoor cats and so on. Um, but cat fencing is a wonderful alternative. It's, it's no more expensive than putting in a fence for a dog. Yeah. And um, you're right. People should really start thinking about it more. Yeah. Yeah. So um, why, why do you think sort of going to the harness and leash outdoor adventure? Cause that's, mm -hmm. you know, that's the area that um, I'm focused on mm -hmm. with kitty cat go. And I unfortunately hear from a lot of people that, when their vets find out that they take their cats out, <laughs> even on a harness and leash that they, you know, some vets advise against it and they don't agree mm -hmm. with it. And mm -hmm. that surprises me. And I, as a vet yourself, I'm curious, like, why do you think that is? Why would some vets caution against harness and leashed outdoor adventures? I can only guess at this because it's never been my mindset. Um, but a good majority of vets don't know cats. Um, there's lots of veterinarians who don't really like cats. Um, they're scared to treat them. You know, it's dangerous to treat cats. If you don't read a cat right, it, you know, they're, they're not as amenable as dogs. Cats don't walk into the clinic wagging their tails, jumping all over you and licking your face. Um, so I think many veterinarians, it, it's difficult as a veterinarian, we are trained on all species. Yeah. And so it's very difficult to get really good at one, um, which is why I always advise people to find a feline only veterinarian, because at least there you have a veterinarian who's training and, and studying and keeping up on everything just feline. And so they would be a little bit more amenable to it. I think um, it's they probably say it because it's a foreign idea to them. They probably think, oh, like, you know, you must be some kind of wacko or something if you think you're going to put your cat on a leash and walk yeah. them. And like, why would you do that? So part of it is just um, lack of knowledge. And the other thing about veterinarians, as, as in almost any trade, we spew what we're taught. And one of the things I learned after I got out of vet school that I realized while in vet school, you are so grateful to be there. You are so, you know, it's tough to get into vet school and the curriculum is difficult. And it's, it's a passion that most every student has had their entire life. This is all they've ever wanted to do. So you get there and, and you just do what they tell you. And you listen to everything that they say and you spew it back just like they want it. Um, 
it never dawned on me in vet school to like question things. Yeah. It, it just, you know, um, they told us to feed one food and one food only and never switch food. And if you do, you're going to upset their stomach. And then we go out into practice and we tell people just feed one food and one food only and never switch up. And, and, you know, a couple of years of doing that, I thought, why? Like, I never asked why. Yeah. <laughs> and what if I didn't do that? And so on. And, and so I really don't fault veterinarians for it. I just think it's a lack of knowledge and a lack yeah. of really just understanding and questioning and, you know, bucking the norms a little bit. Yeah. 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 That makes sense. I, cause I know just like from, as I run into just regular people, not veterinarians, but mm -hmm. as I'm out walking my cats or, you know, going on adventures with them, so many people that I run into are su surprised and to see cats mm -hmm. on a leash because it's not commonplace. I mean, as much as right. I would love it to be, <laughs> it's, it's not, right? And so I guess a, a lot of the surprise and um, questions and stuff, they come from a place of ignorance. And I don't mean that in like a negative way. They just mm -hmm. don't, they just don't know, right? They've never seen it it's, it's new to them. And, and I suppose that's true for veterinarians too, you know? Right. Absolutely. Um, we're getting better and there are more people, you know, as, as you probably know, you've got a great following group that are starting to do it and get into it. And as more and more people see that, then it will be start to become more commonplace. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, along these same lines, I just had a comment. Um, Sonia said that there are sh shelters and rescues who say they won't let you adopt a cat mm -hmm. unless you, you know, assure them they're going to be indoor only. And that includes even leash walking. And mm -hmm. that's so unfortunate. <laughs> it is super unfortunate. Um, I was getting ready to tell you a story recently. Um, we have a lake house that has been, um, it's in its in Georgia and it's, uh, we have a lot of cats that get dumped there. And uh, recently there's two cats that, uh, I don't know where they came from, but they're, they're there. And I am close with the Humane Society in that county, contribute a lot to them. And I called them up and said, you know, would you do me a favor? It's two hours away from where I live. I said, there's, there's two cats there. And um, would you please trap them for me? I would like to do some TNR with them, pay for it, everything like that, so on. And um, they said, of course we would. If they're friendly, though, um, we would rather adopt them out through the Humane Society than to release them. And so they've actually caught both the kitties and they're not feral. They're a little bit friendly, um, but they have a rule that you have to keep cats indoors. And so now the big dilemma is, is I'm going to have to have two more cats um, until I can find a home for these two, because they have lived and existed. They're in great health. They're, they don't have feline leukemia. They don't have FIV. They um, are very healthy looking. They're happy cats. And I don't want them adopted out into a home that keeps them indoor only. Yeah. These are adult kitties who are used to exploring. They're used to going wherever they want. They have survived this long on their own. And I think it would be extremely cruel if they were put in a situation like that. Um, and it is part of my crusade to really get to humane societies through my book and through my talks to start to reevaluate this, this indoor only. I mean, owners, um, we should have enough respect for them that they're going to love their animal enough to do the right thing by them. And if you happen to have a home, as many people do with big yards and space between houses and cul-de-sacs where there's relatively few um, problems with letting your cat out, why would that cat not be allowed out? And yeah. why aren't owners allowed to make that decision on their own? So I agree. It's a, it's a huge problem. Like I said, it's gone from, from 
you know, black to white with no gray area whatsoever in between. And um, that's harmful. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, a, like you mentioned, a good alternative is cat fences. Mm -hmm. I have someone asking about uh, cat fences. Alex says she'd love to hear more about them. What do they look like? So they can go on existing fences or they can be put up immediately, but it's, it, it just attaches and, and goes like down like this. It just has bars that go like this. So the cat can't get up and over. Hmm. And um, just Google cat fence. Uh, I, I, there's several companies that do it, but um, it, like I said, they, they, you can put it on existing fences and it just, they, it has attachments. It just puts it on, or you can buy the whole fencing itself. Um, but it's just kind of an arm like that. Kind of like an overhang. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if the cat, you know, the cat can't, it's too high for the cat to jump over, but a cat can climb a fence. Yeah. When they climb the fence, they get to here. Gotcha. There's no way they can get back over. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty cool. And so, you know, there's strollers, there's leashes and harnesses. There's, um, like I said, you know, when, when I had Rudolph, I used to take a chair outside and read and Rudolph would be out there with me. He and I used to take walks all the time. And this was 40 years ago, way before leashes and, and harnesses, but they're smart. They'll come with you. I mean, anybody with a cat in their house, when they call their cat, they know your cat will come. Um, and people can train cats from an early age, clicker training to, to come to them. Um, years ago, when I was first in practice, I used to teach people, we, we used to have can openers and cats were very conditioned to the sound of a can opener. Yes. Um, we don't have that anymore with the pop tops, but I would condition people, I, I would tell people how to condition their cat with the can opener to get their cat to come home and to feed every day at four o'clock or four 30 so that their cat got accustomed to getting that canned food at that time so that they were outside during the day, they would be home at four, four 30 for their food. And then you keep them in at night and don't let them out till, you know, after sunrise. Um, I think back to when I was a child, we would come home from school, we'd have a snack, we'd do our homework, and then we were gone until dinner time. Yeah, it was before cell phones, you know, my parents didn't know where we were at, but we were home at dinner. And that was the rule. Um, you know, I, I don't even think kids do that anymore. Like, um, you're too scared to let the kid go out. But we we've become too fear based and we're not giving cats credit enough that um, they can go out safely in, in a variety of ways. And you can be a good parent. Um, I, I equate it to, you know, everybody does it for the safety factor. And yet if you have a teenager who is 16 years old about to get their license um, you're putting your child in a death trap by letting them go and drive. And yet nobody thinks about that. They make sure their child has, you know, driving lessons, that they're safe, that they get their license, that they put a seatbelt on, they buy the safest car they can get for them, and they let them go and drive. Um, we're so fear-based that we're keeping these cats as these little China dolls in our four walls fear to let them do anything at all or be like a cat. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so another alternative to outside that I know some people do and, and a viewer Terry is asking about is that some people tether their cats outside and then leave them unattended like they would a dog. Um, I would never do that. Okay. What what are the dangers of that? Like why? Would uh, huge dangers. A, a dog comes along. How's that cat going to get away? Yeah. Um, and um, when any animal, any animal gets tangled in a wire or anything like that, they don't know to loosen up to let go. What do they do? They pull, pull, pull and only pull stronger. Um, I would I would think that would I, I would find that horrible. 
I, I would never, ever tether a cat. So ever. that is not on the list of no. alternatives. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, cats, cats are, they call them scaredy cats, but you know, it works in their favor. They're supposed to be scared. They're, they're preyed upon. Not only are they predators, but they are preyed upon. And so, no, I can, I can't ever imagine tethering a cat. Yeah. Makes sense. Um, so mm -hmm. we've, we've talked a lot about the importance of letting your cat experience the outdoors. Um, now for some people who, you know, might live in a city, like you said, or an apartment, mm -hmm. or, I mean, even those of us who, you know, just can't let our cats out, you know, right. even on a harness and leash or whatever, on a regular basis, we, rely on a lot of indoor enrichment mm -hmm. and making sure our cats are mentally and phys physically stimulated indoors. What, mm -hmm. what are some of your favorite indoor enrichment activities for cats? Well, the first thing I tell everybody is indoor only kitties are high maintenance. It is super high maintenance to keep them entertained, to take care of an indoor only kitty. It's hard. I wake up every day and I go, oh, how can, what can I do different today? They need something novel. They need something new. So we'll go back to the fresh air, sunshine, and grass. Open windows. That's everybody can do. And everybody who opens up a window, the cat will be in that window within two seconds. Um, they love smelling outside. They love it. Cats have to feel differences in temperature. You know, we're messing around with their fur and their skin. Um, for the most part in the wintertime, they build up coats and then they blow them in the summer. And think about your indoor environment. In the winter, we have the heat on. And in the summer, we have the air conditioning on. So we're really doing things right there, right on the top with their um, integument. Mm -hmm. So opening windows, that's great. And you can change the day because one day, one day you open up the windows to the front of the house. The next day you open up the windows to the back of the house. You open up a side window. Um, you can do things like, you know, we all have closets that are shut. You know, the doors are shut to the closet. Open a closet one day. Let them uh, explore in there. The forbidden closed door. Yes. <laughs> Um, you know, I'm up, I'm up here in my bonus room and I have an attic off of here and the cats love going in the attic and exploring. Um, if I had the door open to the attic every day, it wouldn't be really cool. But if yeah. you open it once or twice a week, it's like, Ooh, what's new in there? Yeah. Yeah. Um, for, for us, we have an unfinished basement mm -hmm. and, uh, the cats aren't normally allowed down there. But every now and then, you know, open the door and they run right down those stairs and then they're down right. there forever just exploring all the nooks and crannies and all of that. They have the best time down there. Exactly. Um, it just takes a lot of thought process to wake up and kind of say, what can I do today? What new toy can I bring out? Uh, what new game can we do? Where can I move the box around? Um, throw a sheet over the cocktail table and create a tent. Mm. Like, um, you know, the, the book is chock full of ideas. So, I mean, there's hundreds of them. Even with that, I, I still struggle but every day I'm able to find something that I can do that's just a little bit different for my cats. Um, as far as direct sunlight, nowadays with, with houses so close to each other and so on, I drive out of my neighborhood and the majority of homes, their, their blinds are shut. Their yeah. curtains are closed. They don't want people looking in. And I know there's cats inside of those homes. You know, open the blinds, open the curtains, let them get sunlight, not in just that one ray that comes in on that one room, but maybe some other windows and other rooms. Um, I feel like once cat owners start realizing that, that their, their cats are in four walls and it really is boring and, and it really is unenriched that all it takes is just that little shift in mindset and, and, and the opportunities just start exploding. Um, I feel like cats, the majority of cats 
enjoy eating grass. I think it's a necessary part of their health. And that's another thing that indoor cats don't have any exposure to. So I grow grass for my cats 24-7. Um, they have access to grass. Um, sometimes if I forget or our routine is off, I go outside and I pick it and just mm. bring it in as a little bouquet and give them the grass to eat. So thinking about outdoors and bringing outdoors indoors. Um, go, go pick up a, a limb off out of your yard, a branch, some leaves, bring it in, let them smell it, let them experience it. Um, smell is very important to cats. And so giving them a variety of different things, scent enrichment is easy. When you bring your, your mail in, drop it on the floor, drop that junk mail on the floor, hmm. let them smell it. Um, so again, just thinking outdoor, bring everything in indoor. Um, so we could talk all night about enrichment yeah, well, <laughs> and what all that it needs to do. Yeah. What I love about all the ideas that you shared so far is that none of them cost a single thing. Mm -hmm. No, no. Cats are high maintenance, but low cost. Yeah. I mean, think about the things that they like to do outside. They don't cost anything. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, there certainly are things we can buy. Like I have puzzle feeders and, you know, all mm -hmm. kinds of enrichment toys. And I know you Des with Desi and Rue, you create and make all these really cool enrichment toys. But it is so great to know that it's not necessary, right? We can mm -hmm. find plenty of things to enrich their lives that don't cost us a penny. Exactly. Exactly. You know, everybody knows how much cats love boxes, but it's so easy to take a box and not just set it down, but turn it over and cut a hole in it and let them mm -hmm. go in that way. And then, you know, maybe even build a box on top of another or put a box up on a table or move the box to a different room. Yeah. Um, it just takes that mindset. Like I said, if people just start waking up every day and saying, what, what can I do for my cat new today? Just one little thing. Um, yeah. And look around the house, you'll kind of find a lot of them. Yeah, yeah, I I like the boxes. So one year, it's been a couple years now, but one year my husband and I collected like all the boxes from deliveries, you know, like Chewy boxes, <laughs> Amazon boxes. We had uh, a whole castle. We built mm -hmm. a whole castle out of our boxes. We like cut That's tunnels. Cool. And had it was like multiple floors and had it in the corner of our living room. And we kept it up. The cats eventually lost interest in it. Like, like, mm -hmm. like you said, it eventually becomes old news and not interesting. Right. But for a while, that kept them pretty entertained. And mm -hmm. it didn't cost us anything. It, I just had to use some packaging tape to tape things together. And and uh, it was a fun project for, for us. And the right. cats loved it. <laughs> exactly. Brown paper, you know, brown paper. Cats love paper. And mm -hmm. so start throwing sheets of paper around the house. They'll be like, what? Which one do I sit on? Um, it, it isn't difficult. It's, um, it's the mindset of, of having a, a two-year-old child. And, you know, people who have children know to open up the Tupperware and the pots and pans. And um, it, it just is, is, looking for ways to keep them entertained. Yeah. Yeah. Well, for those who are watching with us, I would definitely be interested to hear what are your little tricks mm -hmm. for keeping your cats entertained when they're inside and you're not able to take them out. What, what are your cat's favorite little enrichment activities? I'd love to hear them too. I'm yeah. always looking for more myself. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll, I'll keep my eye on the comments. Um, okay. But Lynn, we've mentioned your company, Desi and Rue, and your book. Can tell us a little bit more about, about both of those things? Um, I'll tell you a little bit about the book, which was um, written during the pandemic. Here's a picture of it. And it is the type of book that you could just open it up to any page whatsoever. It's not a read cover to cover book. And... Um, what I put in the book was 
everything that I want cat owners to know. Um, you know, when, when I'm in the exam room and somebody has their brand new kitten, like I just want to spend all day with them to tell them everything that they need to know. So that was what the book was about. Um, we talk about food and how to feed them and, um, you know, enrichment ideas, also the indoor outdoor dilemma and, um, Decline, which is a, a big platform of mine. I'm very anti declaw proud to say I've never done one in my career. Um, that is the other harmful thing that has been done to cats with this indoor only issue. Yes. You know, veterinarian said, keep your cats inside. And now that they're inside, let's chop off their toes. Um, I'm, so I'm impressed that uh, as long as you've been a veterinarian and that practice is only now recently mm -hmm. becoming not acceptable. I'm surprised you've made it through without having done mm -hmm. one round of applause on that Lynn. That's Thank amazing. You. I refused to do it when I was in vet school and had to go round and round with my professors on it. Um, wow. thought that I might not graduate <laughs> because of it, but, um, oh my gosh. no, it's, it's wrong. It is, it is beyond wrong. It is cruel. It's inhumane. And, um, you know, the poor cats who not only are they indoors in unenriched environments, but then they lose all their toes and are in pain for the rest of their life. It is, again, the, the, the indoor issue, a lot of cats do need to be kept indoors, but we need to take the extra effort to really counsel those owners on how to keep them happy and healthy indoors. Um, it's, it's just gone from one extreme to the other. And I think it's really harmful to cats overall. And um, I'm, I'm glad you have me on the show to talk about it. So thank you. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm, I'm glad to have you. And um, we have some comments coming in from people about their uh, fun ideas. So Terry says that they occasionally turn the That's right. cat tree on its side for a few hours and it becomes an instant item of interest. That's, yes. that's such a good idea to take something that is there every day for them and just turn it around, flip it over, yeah. and it instantly is different and new. Um, Sandra says that Nimbus and Lacey are good at playing together. We do training sessions twice a day. Mm. Uh, she teaches Nimbus new tricks from time to time, and he also enjoys skateboarding in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. You know, that reminds me, throw a, an ice cube on the floor in the kitchen. Yeah. That's another free enjoyment, entertaining um, way to keep, keep your cat active. Um, you know, think about ourselves. If, if, if we were in a prison cell, you know, anything new no matter what it is, would be a welcome addition. Mm -hmm. And so the same with turning that cat tree over. That's a wonderful idea because it's new. Mm -hmm. It's different. Yeah. Oh my gosh, what's this? Let me yeah. explore what happened. Like that, that's wonderful. Yeah. Yep. Um, Sandra also says that she takes them out in the stroller and leash to a park once a week and around the neighborhood. That's, That's right. awesome. That's and then right. Sonia says that her cat Percy loves playing Where's the Treat? And she hides treats and he has to find them using his nose. I love that. So scent enrichment is extremely important. Um, probably one of the highest on my list. Um, a cat's world is all about smell. You know, when they're born from the very first hour, they have to smell out the mom's teat. Mm -hmm. And so their eyes are closed, their ears are closed. They live their first two weeks of life completely on smell. And um, too many people don't realize that. So scent enrichment, hiding treats, hiding any sort of scented, um, I sell silver vine. And so you can sprinkle that on toys and do the same thing. Put it like behind the cushion of the couch or underneath the chair and, and let them root it out. Like I said, just throw anything on the floor. When you bring your grocery bags in, put them on the floor first. Let your cat sniff them out. Um, things like that, but using scent enrichment, hiding, uh, treats, toys, 
valerian, silver vine, catnip, uh, vary it up. Uh, again, bring branches in from outside, bring leaves in from outside. Those are wonderful ways to enrich. Yeah. So I know it's such a common misconception that cats are low maintenance animals, right? I mean, you've <laughs> talked so many, you've mentioned so many times tonight that they're high maintenance, right? And I mean, mm -hmm. we all probably here tonight know that because we, you know, we have cats and every day you're having to entertain them and make sure that they're, we're meeting all of their needs. Right. But still so many people think, oh, I'm going to get a cat because I don't have the time or whatever for a dog and cats. I can just get them, put them down a bowl of food and put down a couple toys and that's it. Mm -hmm. You know, what, what would you say to, to those people? And like, what, what, what would you try to think of how I want to try to phrase my question? Like, what, what are, why is that a bad idea? Like what are, you've mentioned the, the health mm -hmm. concerns, right? Was it directly related? Absolutely. So again, in the old days, cats were low maintenance. They went outside, mm -hmm. you know, they entertained themselves. They came in to eat and sleep and they let you pet them and they might've slept in bed with you. And that was all you had to do. And those yeah. cats didn't need more from you. They were outside exploring all day. They were eating the grass that they wanted. They were lounging in the sun. They were climbing trees or walking on fences and exploring the neighborhood. Um, those cats are low maintenance. That, that's a wonderful life for a cat. Um, if they're indoor only, the high maintenance comes from keeping them enriched and yeah. finding all the different ways to keep them enriched. Um, unenriched cats, you can pick them out easily. They're overweight. They're quite obese. They don't play. As so many owners tell me my cats don't play. They are so depressed mm -hmm. and bored. And what do depressed people do? They sleep all day. Yeah. Um, you know, we address that in the book as well. If it, you know, they say cats sleep 20 hours a day. <laughs> they don't you know, bored, unenriched cats living in a four walls, they sleep 20 hours a day. Cats that go outside, mm -mm, not at all. They're out exploring. If they're relaxing, they're not sleeping. They're just very lightly cat napping. Um, that is, you know, a, a natural cat, a real cat is out there hunting. They have to have food and they eat 10 to 20 times a day. How can they eat 10 to 20 times a day and hunt and still sleep 20 hours a day? They don't. It's our indoor cats that do. So cats that don't play, cats that sleep all day, cats that are obese, cats who have really poor fur. Um, those are, those are our low maintenance, unenriched cats that mm -hmm. are living extremely unhappy lives. And um, we see them a lot in the vet office for pancreatitis and cystitis and stomatitis and inflammatory bowel disease and all kinds of things. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's interesting because that is how people typically think of cats, right? As, mm -hmm. oh, I have a cat and it sleeps all day and it's fat and happy, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. And that's another myth. Yeah. Yep. Well, I... We've uh, been depressing today. <laughs> well, no, I mean, it's important. It's Get important them out. Leash walk them. Harness train them. Um, I think one of the best things... The newest thing to come out of all this, though, that's really exciting to me that was not around five years ago, 10 years ago, is clicker training. Um, mm -hmm. Because that is absolutely, you know, it's using their brain. It's, it's interacting with the uh, pet parent and the cat. It's keeping them stimulated. It's building that bond. So I have really become a great fan of clicker training. I think that it's something everybody can do. Um, go on to YouTube, you see a million videos on how to do it. Mm -hmm. There's all types of resources. It doesn't cost anything. And it is a wonderful way to keep a cat enriched indoors. Yeah. Yeah. There are so many easy ways, you know, mm -hmm. for us to all keep our cats indoors. There's really 
no excuse to have that bored cat that mm -hmm. sleeps 20 hours a day. Because even if, you know, a lot of people say, well, I'm too busy. I work a lot. And I mean, I do too. So, I, I mean, I understand. But mm -hmm. flipping a, a cat tree over on its side takes what? Exactly. A, a second of your time, you know? And so there are all these little ways that even if you're really busy, you can mm -hmm. you can find ways to play with your cat and, and keep them entertained and enriched. Yes. And also start thinking in ways of letting them out and, and looking at your environment and saying, you know what, my cat probably could go outside in my house, you know, in this neighborhood, in this area, or um, on a leash or on a harness or on a stroller, or putting in the cat fence, or just putting netting on your deck, um, mm -hmm. or going outside and, and, you know, with treats, keeping your cat next to you, taking a chair out there, reading a book and having them close by. Um, I really, really would love to encourage people to, to throw out that I have to keep my cat indoor only. Um, it, it's not for everyone. Yeah. And I mean, as you've mentioned, there are so many ways to let your cat experience the outside, mm -hmm. no matter what kind of environment you live in. Even if you do live in an apartment, I know people who have taken like their balconies and or their porches on their mm -hmm. cause most of, most apartments have some sort of even if it's small, they've you know, most of them have a little outdoor patio space and you can take um, netting and put it so your cat Absolutely. can't like jump over the railing or whatever and and your cat has a little outdoor space that mm -hmm. they can enjoy. Yeah. My son has a kitten that he adopted this year and he lives in an apartment and he's up on the top floor. Um, and so I have him taking her in the stairwell. Um, most people, you know, he's way up high. Most people are not on the stairwell. And even if they are, all the doors are closed. Mm -hmm. So it's not like she can really go far and he takes one of our wiggly balls and throws it down in the stairwell and he lets her investigate up and down there. Um, we've worked on clicker training. So she comes back when he calls her. I mean, he's with her, but like, you know, if she starts going down a couple of flights or whatever, but um, she gets to investigate that, at least get out of the apartment itself, mm -hmm. um, as well as the hallways. Um, you know, it, it, it doesn't even have to be out, out. Yeah, um, it can be just enclosed a environment, out. just a yes. new environment. Get out of those four walls. Yeah. Yeah. This has been um, a very enlightening discussion. I think, you know, I, I uh, always enjoy talking about this and I appreciate you sharing all of your thoughts and opinions. We'll start wrapping things up for those that are watching. If you have any final questions or comments or anything that you want to share, drop them in the comments um, and I'll keep an eye on those and Lynn can answer any final questions you have. But um, Lynn, where where can people find you online if they have another question they want to follow up with you about or they want to know more about what you do? Um, so my, my company is Desi and Rue, and, um, you can go to DesiRue.com. Um, there's a contact page there. It's info at DesiRue.com and that will come directly to me. And I'd be happy to answer any of your questions. Um, reach out to me. You know, my goal is to help pet owners, um, strengthen that bond with their cats and keep them happy and healthy. And um, I just want to thank you for doing what you do. And that's encouraging people to leash train and harness their cat and get them outside. Um, you're providing a huge service and you're making cats lives better. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. And I uh, am grateful to the amazing community of people that mm -hmm. I have that are doing that with me. And um, it, it really is, it really is a wonderful thing. And mm -hmm. um I know you too have mentioned your book. I'm going to, for those watching, I'm going to drop a link to Lynn's book on Amazon, but it is available on her website, Desi Rue, and also Barnes and Noble and pretty much anywhere books are sold, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And if um, you can even ask your local library, it's in many libraries as well. So you don't even have to buy it. 
Very cool. Um, well, that that's it for tonight. Um, again, Lynn, thank you so much for taking the time to share your knowledge with us and uh, and being yeah, just being here tonight. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for having me and letting me voice all of this out. I hope I didn't, you know, I wasn't a Debbie Downer to too many people. <laughs> no, no, not at all. I think, you know, you shared so many great ideas for people and, um, you know, spreading, spreading awareness and, and mm -hmm. getting the mission out, you know, that's our goal, right? It is. Yeah. Well, um, if, if you're, if you have any more questions for anybody, um, watching, be sure to join my Facebook group, Kitty Cat Go Adventure Team. We can continue any discussions over there. And then also I want to encourage you to mark your calendars for Wednesday, February 8th. That's going to be the next episode of Kitty Cat Go Live. I'll be talking with Tiffany McCullough, who is a vet tech who specializes in feline nutrition. So she's going to share all of her new um, her information and knowledge with us. And she is actually also from Georgia, Atlanta. She's in Atlanta. So it's going to be a bunch oh, of Georgia wow. people. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to watch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and then of course, last but not least, be sure to hit the subscribe button if you're watching on YouTube or the follow button if you're watching on Facebook so you can keep up with future episodes and happenings. Uh, but that's it for tonight. Thanks for hanging with us. And I hope you learned something new and had some fun. Good night, everybody. Bye-bye.